Hi, this is Charlie at Vintage Speed. Today we're going to show you how to put our 3-2 progressive linkage on a Rochester Tri-Power Carb Pack when you have an electric choke. On these Rochesters, the electric choke housing interferes with your linkage. So our linkage for the electric choke has a little dog leg in it like this, which allows it to clear the housing. It's also countersunk back there, so the screw for maximum clearance. So the first thing you're going to get with our linkage is you're going to get what we call the center arm or the long hole arm. You're going to get the actuator rod. You're going to get two locking collars, which are held on this uh, Allen wrench. I normally keep those up there. All right, you're going to get the actuator pin that goes here that actuates your progressive. And you're going to get the long rod that goes between both your carburetors. So your two secondaries operate together. All right, the whole purpose of this over the fact that of our standard linkage is, is this booger right here. The electric choke housing on these carburetors interferes with the linkage. So, but our linkage overcomes that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do here is, is you've got your rod set up like this. This is the way it'll come in the kit. The screw's countersunk to the back, so the rod to the front. This is dog-legged in. All right, so you install your center, your long arm on your center shaft, and you want that facing just to a little bit forward of center line of that fuel inlet, so right about there. But then also you've got to make sure that you move this out to where it clears the uh, where it clears the choke housing. One other thing I might not mention is anytime you're doing this, open your choke up and let so it's not resting on the fast idle cam. You want your choke opened up. All you got to do is move your linkage open the choke and let it rest on so it's on the right part of the, of the fast idle. Okay, so here's what we're doing. We've got clearance there now. That's what you want. You've got to get it where it clears the choke thermostat. All right, and then when you do that, you can set tighten your little set screw down. And you can go ahead and tighten your, your other screw down here. The best thing to use in working on these carburetors is an offset screwdriver. If you don't happen to have one, just take a torch, map gaps torch or a welding torch and heat up a regular screwdriver. Just put you a 90 degree bend in it. It makes it a lot easier for working on this stuff if you've got an offset screwdriver. Okay, once you get that on, just go ahead and tighten your arm down. And then make sure that it's clearing the choke thermostat like so. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the actuator pin. The actuator pin, our CL45, is the pin that operates your progressive linkage. Now what you're gonna do with that is you're gonna put one flat washer, slide this on, slip that in your hole, and then you, you use one, other, one up more flat washer, and then this rod goes on slip the rod over like so okay and then I use another flat washer and a nylock nut the nylock nut is nice because it stays where you put it so you and this is critical on this linkage because everything is not tidy tidy it's uh, it's uh, backed off so you get a little bit of play in it and I'll show you what I mean here right quick now what you want to do on this roll pin is you want to go ahead and tighten this down till it's snug and then you want to back it off about an eighth of a turn you don't want it loose but you don't want it so tight that the swivel pin won't swivel because as this goes through the arch it needs to swivel just a little bit this is real easy to install there's not much to it Okay, as you get, pull her on down until she's snug. Remember I told you you had a, 
a nylock nut here so that nylock nut okay once it's once it stops in other words it's, then just back it off just enough that you get movement in that that's what you want right there you don't want it sloppy but you want movement in it okay now we're going to come back here to the back carburetors and we've got to get this adjusted properly and the way we're going to do that is what you want is you want this rod perfectly perpendicular to this screw hole in other words you want this to go straight through as you see there it's not going straight through I need to give it just a little bit more and there it's also you see it's off a little cattywampus there so you give it another turn make sure it's perfect goes straight through the arm it needs a half a turn more and we got it okay as you can see there this is perfectly perpendicular through the rod end okay and now what we're going to do once we get that on there is we're going to slide this in right here and we're going to put a little spacer washer right behind that screw we're going to put that on there we're going to put another little flat washer behind it and we're going to put another nylock nut. Oop. Now this is critical on this one that you adjust this properly. Okay, what you want to do is you want to have, there's got to be four and a half play in this, this rod. And the reason for that is, as I explained in the other videos, is the, uh, the four and a half movement these throttle plates are so precision in the front and the rear base and our linkage is so rigid that if one set of throttle plates touches, it'll hold the other set open and you'll get a vacuum leak. So in order to compensate for that, what we do is we loosen this. Once you snug it down, you wanna back it off a little bit. So you get just a little bit of four and a half movement in there. Now the way the factory did it on the Olds J2s and the 348 Chevys and Cadillacs, it's uh, kind of a hokey way of doing it, but they they actually slotted the carb arm. And it had a round hole in one carb arm, and in the other carb arm it was egg-shaped because they used a rod that went between the front and the rear carburetor, and that allowed one set to close, and with that slot in there it did the same thing. But since our linkage works like this, as you can see, that works pretty good. It gives it, it lets one set close, and it gives it just enough slack that the other set can close. Once that it's adjusted and you've got a little play in this rod, go ahead and tighten down your two screws. The two inside screws lock the sleeve on the threaded rod. The two outside screws position and lock the heim joints. The rod ends in place. Okay, now that we got that, we want to bring this back through and make sure everything's clearing, which it is. Okay, now we're ready to, to adjust our linkage. Okay, this locking collar here is just a safety. The linkage will work without it, but we put it on there as a safety. You'll also notice that this rod's real long. I do that because of different carb centers. Some of these are six inch carb centers on your Pontiacs and your, uh, your GTO. Uh, Olds J2 and 348 Chevys all use six inch center to center on the small block Chevy They're five and a half inch center to center So what you can do is after you get your linkage cut off you can cut this rod off Just take a cut off tool and whack it off and take the little burr off of it. Okay, so now we're We're ready to adjust this linkage. Usually what I do is I come up here about an inch and a half And there's a several ways to do this if you've got somebody to help you hold it you can hold all your carburetors in the wide open position and slide this up till it touches the roll pin or you can set that right there 
and open your open your carburetor linkage pull it all the way to the wide open position and make sure that this carburetor is bottoming out against the stop your center carburetor is bottoming out against the stop and your end carburetor is bottoming out against the stop which they are I can't believe that I got it perfect right off the bat so that's exactly how it's supposed to work now pull your throttle open a little bit stick your choke open so you're so you're on the fast idle cam or off the fast idle cam and then what you want to do is you want to bring this locking collar back and a good way to gauge how far you want this from is lay your allen wrench right there give me one allen wrench width between that and lock that collar down lock this collar down and you're done that's all there is to it now your linkage will work you'll be running on 65 percent throttle on your center carburetor you'll open all your your end carburetors and everything will be wide open at the same time by the way this is our new one of our new finishes he'll zoom in on it for you there this is called silver sand I also have this in a little bit darker shade if you want it to look more like chromate I have one that's called textured chromate if you notice these have a little texture to them it's almost like a real fine sand finish this finish is using a process that we developed uh, for powder coating zinc and uh, this is actually bonded right to the carburetor it's put put in here and it's baked on at 400 degrees this is impervious to all gas and oil any kind of chemicals if you want to clean the carburetor you can even use brake clean by the way brake clean if you spray it on paint it'll peel the paint but you can actually clean this carburetor with brake clean it, it won't hurt a thing you can spray it with brake clean if you get a little stain on it just spray it off and take an air hose and dry it off or whatever and it doesn't it doesn't hurt it at all the finish stays perfect so you won't loosen it we've also saturated these carburetors in gas for 72 hours submerged the complete part in gas and pulled it out after 72 hours blew it off and it looks just like this so it doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt uh there's nothing that will attack it or finish it like regular chromate where you get fingerprints on it and stuff and it's difficult to clean okay i think that shows you guys how to do it now that you the linkage if it if it's not for a carburetor with an electric choke in other words if this housing's gone we have a choke bracket here and you just have the carb arm here then you don't need this dog leg in the arm so this this would be straight and this arm would be in closer to the carburetor and that's basically the only difference remember on our system all of our systems you run on 65 percent power and then you pull in the outside carburetors and the difference between the two fulcrum points here and here determines all three carburetors will reach a wide open position at the same time. I hope this video helps you with this and thank you for watching.